No, I wish this was clickbait, but unfortunately, it's not. Well, first of all, I'd like to thank you because if you clicked on this video, it means that you care about me and my channel at least enough to care or be curious about what's going on. And for that, I'm grateful. Before I tell you the story of how I was robbed out of thousands of dollars by a company called DistroKid, money that came from you purchasing my albums to support me, let me first give you some context on how the music industry works nowadays for most musicians. Most professional musicians nowadays are independent artists, including yours truly. That means that we have no contracts with record labels or managers. We are self-employed business owners managing our own careers with a direct relationship with you, the awesome fan. We sell our products or art directly to you. That is possible thanks, of course, to the internet and the awesome digital music stores like Spotify, iTunes, you know them all. We upload our music to them and they make it available for you no matter where you are in the world. You pay them to have access to that music, they pay us after taking a percentage, which is fair. But it would be too much of a hassle for us to upload our music in every single store ourselves, plus collecting our money. There are nearly 200 of those stores. So for that reason and other corporate shenanigans, we hired the so-called digital music distributors. Those distributors get our music submitted to the digital stores and collect our payments for us. Some of them also provide extra services like marketing, cover song licensing, etc. They do that in exchange for either a fixed fee from the artist or a percentage of our earnings. Whichever the case, it's something previously accorded and clear to both parties. All they are really is a service provider that we hire. We can fire them anytime. They're not our labels, not our managers. They're not our accountants. They don't speak for us. They don't pay our taxes for us. They have no saying whatsoever over our careers, over our finances. And that way, a symbiotic relationship between all those entities flourishes and everyone is happy. Or at least, that's how it was supposed to be. Okay, now that you know how things work in this industry, I can proceed to tell you my unfortunate story. So, I was browsing the internet, searching for a distributor to get my songs in digital stores. Stumbled upon this company called DistroKid and started exploring their website. And right at the top, you're greeted with the words, keep 100% of your earnings. 100% of my earnings? All I need is pay 20 bucks a year and I can upload as much as I want and I keep all my money? Well, sign me in, mister! Yeah, right. So I uploaded many songs to stores through DistroKid for many months and collected my payouts with no issues. I was very excited because it's been three months since my first viral song and three months is the average delay for payment from stores. For those who don't know, my metal rendition of Toss a Coin to Your Witcher was heard by millions and millions of people across platforms. So I was about to receive my payment for my first viral hit after years of non-stop grinding. I couldn't be happier. So as soon as the money arrived at DistroKid, I made the withdrawal request to my PayPal account, as always. But then something happened. When the money arrived at my PayPal, I noticed that there was nearly one third of the value missing. I thought there must be some mistake. So I double checked the amount that I had withdrawn from my DistroKid account and compared it to the value that arrived through their PayPal deposit. And there was indeed thousands of dollars of difference. Thousands of dollars just gone. I know that PayPal fees are not so absurd and that had never happened before. So I went into contact with DistroKid. I sent them a polite email explaining what happened and just saying, hey, there must be some mistake. What happened to my money? A few days later, I receive an email from someone called June that said, Hi, thanks for reaching out. I'm happy to help. So she doesn't address me by name. It's the typical polite robotic control C, control V online support experience. She goes on. If your country of tax residency is not in the United States, up to 30% of your earnings may be subject to tax withholding. If there's a tax treaty between your country and the United States, withholding may not be necessary. So, taxes? That makes no sense. I already pay income tax over this money. And that never happened before, nor with DistroKid or with 
any other distributor that I work with. And why the hell is DistroKid paying my taxes? That's my job, not theirs. Especially after spreading all over your website that I would keep 100% of my earnings. This looks very suspicious. She proceeds to prompt me to review my payout info, which I already had done, and then sends me to this article on their website. It already starts deferring to others any actual responsibility of information. This is just basically, hey, go ask an accountant. And then it's word for word exactly what they said on the email. They, they just copied and pasted. Okay, so there seems to be something on their website talking about this 30% withholding, but weird. Months ago, before hiring them, I remember going through pretty much all their website and honestly, I don't recall seeing that. And I won't ask you to take my word for it, because guess what? There are other people who say that too. My brother, Davi Vask, musician, DistroKid client, went through the same thing. Suddenly, 30% gone. Never happened before, and he had no idea it would happen. Fellow Brazilian singer Violet Orlandi reported the same thing to me. She had no idea. The guys from the project Nordex also contacted me and same thing, they were took by surprise. There is also this thread on the subreddit We Are The Music Makers full of comments from people basically saying the same thing. They were DistroKid clients for a long time and suddenly, out of the blue, DistroKid decided to withhold money from them. No email, no warning whatsoever, none of them had knowledge it would happen. They were denied any clarifications and they affirmed that other American companies they work with never do that. So evidence suggests here that it's not just a lapse of memory on my part. There are multiple musicians, DistroKid clients that had no idea about that money withholding until it happened. This shows that this info about it on their website was actually put in there recently. After we already pay them, after we already uploaded our songs, and this is absurd and scammy, especially considering that right beside the article about the withholding there is, oh, what's this? It's an article saying that I keep 100% of my money! Really? When you use DistroKid, you keep 100% of your royalties. We feel strongly that you shouldn't give a percentage of your sales and streaming revenue to your distributor. You earn the money, not them. Really? You keep 100% of the money you earn from sales and streaming sites like iTunes, Spotify, etc. You always keep 100% of that. Enjoy! Really? Back to their email. She then sends me to an article about claiming benefits that only serves to inform me that I cannot do it. And then she ends with, if you have further questions about any of this information, please consult a tax professional. So that line is basically the sum up of this email, which was just Ask an accountant, don't bother us. But of course we're not satisfied with that, right? All that shadiness and conflicting information, conflicting facts and false advertising and thousands of dollars just missing and all I get is ask an accountant. Hell no. So I wrote them back and I said, Hi June, thank you for your reply and assistance. I'm sorry, but this is really strange. There must be a mistake. Firstly, I already pay income tax over this money in my country, Brazil, which by the way, in total, will eat up half of that money. Secondly, I already received multiple other payments from DistroKid before, and none of them had any money withheld from me. And I can prove that. This is my list of withdrawals in the DistroKid platform. This is what I normally get from my distributors each month. This was when my Witcher cover was starting to blow up, people were starting to discover it. And this here is the withdrawal in question, which was when the song had already completely blown up. And by the way, folks, if you think having a viral song alone will make you a millionaire, you have another thing coming. But it's still a considerable sum, especially after years of this. So as you can see, first and second withdrawal numbers coincide perfectly with their respective PayPal transfers. Minus a few dollars of PayPal fees, of course. But on the withdrawal in question, you can see that there's a staggering amount of almost $4,000 missing, just gone. Which leads me to other conflicting info in this very screen. 
You see, all those withdrawals were made through PayPal, as I showed you. This one has the PayPal logo, followed by my PayPal email. And over here it says, minus $8 PayPal fee. Same thing here, minus $20 PayPal fee. But on the withdrawal with the money missing, there's nothing. It only says here, minus banking fees? Why is this being treated by DistroKid as a bank transfer when it was a PayPal transfer? And why are you calling the missing difference banking fees when you just told me it was taxes? Are you taking my money from me because of taxes or because of banks that I didn't use? Make up your mind. Very fishy, conflicting information. And something also fishy that I didn't notice before, but now I do, is that the payout in question arrived in my PayPal with a different company name as sender. Why are you suddenly sending my payments under a different company name, DistroKid? Are you trying to hide something from someone? So I presented those concerns and more to the support staff. Back to my email. Thirdly, I constantly receive payments from multiple other American companies, including other digital music distributors, and none of them withhold money for taxes. Lastly, the front page of your website advertises that your clients receive 100% of their earnings. If this withholding is factual, that turns out to be not at all truthful. If I knew prior to uploading my songs through your service that I would actually have earnings withheld from me, I would have chosen to use another one of my digital distributors that don't practice such withholding. That is seriously misleading. I know it's not your fault personally, and I'm sorry that you're stuck with dealing with this situation, June. Okay, this is me trying to acknowledge the person at the other side. I know that support staff constantly gets shit from clients, and I'm trying to make sure I'm not making this personal. I consulted a lawyer about this, and we both think that all those factors make it all look very fishy and strange. But I count on the possibility that it's just an honest mistake that can be solved without public disputes. Please, tell the responsible sector to send me the money that belongs to me, and it is on DistroKid's possession. Thanks for the assistance. Best regards, Dan Vask. Right, so that was my huge-ass email with all those valid concerns. Let's see how DistroKid responds. Hi again. All DistroKid artists are asked to complete the required tax forms each year, starting in 2020, in order to be able to receive payment through DistroKid. What? At this point, I was honestly wondering if I was talking to a real human or an AI. So I write them this big email, pointing out all the reasons why this is shady, suspiciously inconsistent, and false advertising in an organized, clear, and detailed fashion. And all I get is what it looks like a random sentence by Google Assistant. Oh wait, Gmail hid part of the message here, let's see. Oh, of course. It's the go ask an accountant thing again. Literally less than one line of my email was about accounting. All the rest was pointing out their inconsistent information and practices and false advertising. And they don't even mention it. Instead, they keep hiding behind ask an accountant. No wonder why Gmail thought this was your signature. You keep saying that. You should put it on your logo. This real cute. Ask an accountant. And yes, I did fill my tax forms to receive that payment, as I did for my payments before, from which no money was taken from me. And before someone says that maybe that's because of a new tax law that only came out recently, well, first of all, no, because other American companies that I work with don't do that at all. And second of all, DistroKid's article about those taxes takes me to another article which takes me to this official IRS document, which apparently all this nonsense sprang from. And right in the front page, here it says, for use in 2016. So this actually has been around since 2016, but DistroKid only started practicing it now. Why is that? Well, let's find out. And I'm pretty sure this is the answer why all of that is happening. You see, I went through this accursed thing. And it seems that all this hassle is being caused by this one paragraph here under income subject to withholding, which says, from the sale or exchange of patents, copyrights, and similar intangible property. 
aka a bunch of subjective crap. So the appliance of that money withholding regarding music is actually so subjective that it basically gives distributors the power to do it or not whenever they want. And it seems that DistroKid suddenly decided to take advantage of that. It's the only explanation as to why they didn't withhold money before and why other distributors don't do it, even though that IRS document is at least four years old. Okay, so I wrote them back. And I said, June, have you read my entire email? Please address the concerns I stated in it. Over here, it's starting to show that I'm pissed and with good reason. DistroKid's job is to collect money owed to me by digital stores, not to pay my taxes. That is my job. You're exceeding the functions for which I hired you. Prior to hiring your company, I was falsely led to believe that I will retain 100% of my money. Now one third is being withheld by you against my will, without my prior consent, without prior knowledge when I went into business with you. This is called theft. It's not only disgustingly dishonest, but it also legally constitutes both false advertising and price masking, which will bring DistroKid serious problems in a court of law. Please, don't steal my money. Give it back to me and we can end our businesses amicably. I will only cancel my membership on your platform and upload my songs to one of your competitors without any action for further reparations. Respectfully, Dan Vask. Okay, so try to guess what they replied. If your guess was ask an accountant, congratulations! <laughs> then they proceed to offer me a 20 bucks refund. I don't want a 20 bucks refund. I want a refund on the thousands of dollars you stole from me. And some people tell me I should be careful and not use words like theft or stealing because if it turns out that this disgusting practice is legal, then they can sue me for defamation, forcing me to pay a huge fine or even go to jail. Look, I'm calling things what they are. Imagine someone owes you money and they mail that money to you. The mailman opens the envelope and takes one third of the money. You ask, hey man, you took my money? The mailman replies, uh, yeah, it's for taxes. What? This makes no sense. Uh, ask an accountant. Distro kid never owns that money. They are merely transporting it from the people who owe it to its owner. When you take money that doesn't belong to you and you keep it from its owner, against his will when you promised you wouldn't do it i'm sorry this is called theft by definition i don't care if it's legal stealing it is stealing so can i be taken to court for saying that maybe i'm not afraid because my parents raised me to speak the truth no matter the circumstances no matter what it costs me always absolute objective truth so go ahead and sue me, DistroKid, and let's see how the market reacts when knowing that you not only lie and steal from small independent musicians, but you also take them to court if they dare to tell anyone about it. And someone might say, oh, it's just a rich YouTuber complaining about losing a few thousand dollars. Well, first of all, even if that were the case, it would still be wrong. Second of all, I don't even spend that money with myself. I have one very cheap hobby of collecting old retro video games that I find at flea markets for a few bucks a couple times a month. That's literally the only leisure money that I spend. Pretty much all my money goes either back to the channel for growing the business and paying the awesome musicians that work for me or it goes to a savings account which i plan to use to buy an apartment for my mother and i don't know in america but in brazil four thousand dollars it's a lot of money that has a direct impact in my business and my family. And you think it's over? No, no, no! After I first went public about DistroKid on my socials, something very interesting happened. Musicians started contacting me and sharing their own experiences with DistroKid's shady practices. Fellow YouTube singer Jonathan Young shared a very interesting story with me and gave me permission to show it. John says, Last year they messed something up with their cover song licenses in a couple countries and took down every cover song in Canadian and Mexican online stores. 
without explaining to artists why or what happened. I found out through sad and confused tweets from fans. When I asked them about it, they tried to blame their licensing company, Louder, but Sounddrop also uses Louder and confirmed that couldn't be Louder's fault. A few weeks later, some fine print appeared on their website that says, we don't distribute cover to Canada or Mexico. To this day, I don't know what the hell happened, but they never grew up and explained it. So that's why I left. That's very screwed up. Also, someone sent me this YouTube video where musician Ryan Vatsek tells the sad story of how he was arbitrarily banned from uploading with DistroKid. They didn't even tell him he was banned, they refused to tell him why, and they still wanted him to keep paying them. Horrible stuff. And look, even if that money withholding is legit, which I have my doubts, but let's pretend for a minute that we believe it. You cannot just do that without warning the people who actually own that money. At least an email saying, hey, you know what we agreed when you first hired us? We cannot fulfill that anymore, so you might wanna reconsider working with us. Not to just grab the money in silence while still advertising on your website, keep 100% of your earnings. It shouldn't say that. It should say keep 100% of your earnings except for one third of it, which we'll keep to ourselves for tax reasons. Whatever that means, ask an accountant or whatever. Some of you have been messaging me asking what can I do, how can I help, and I'm very grateful for that. You can do the usual, drop a like, leave a comment, but if you really want to help, share this video and tag DistroKid on it. Maybe they are capable of feeling some sort of shame and return what they stole, but even if they don't, we'll be helping to warn other small musicians about a dishonest company that shouldn't exist. If you follow a musician that works with DistroKid, show this video to them. I'm not saying to boycott DistroKid musicians, don't do that. I mean, I love some of those people on their website. Rob Scallon is awesome, Anthony Vincent is awesome, but they must know. This is not a fun video to make. Digging out and organizing all that info. I'd much rather be making music. I'm a musician, not a detective. But hopefully I did my part. And if you have any questions or concerns whatsoever, or anything I can help you with, well, you can feel absolutely free to ask an accountant.